So now I'm going to install uh, Bitcoin. So let's fire up my virtual machine. Okay, and that has uh, connected directly through to my VPN. So that's great. I'm happy with that. And what we want to do is go to Bitcoin.org and download Bitcoin Core. Uh, we'll go to the resources section and go to Bitcoin Core. Download Bitcoin Core. And we want the Linux version here. And we will save that and that will automatically save to our downloads directory. Okay, so that's saving away or downloading away. And uh, the next thing that we should probably do is verify release signatures. So let's have a look at that. Um, now, there is a full node guide um, where you can uh, utilize or, or, or do all this. So we'll go down to the uh, Linux instructions here. And we want to verify uh, that we have actually downloaded this um, software and it is what's intended to be downloaded. So uh, the way that you would do this, there are some instructions on bitcoincore.org. Verify release signatures and how to verify your download. Okay. So the first thing here, it says click the link above, download the release from your for your platform. So we've done that. Download the list of cryptographic checksums. So let's download that and save that as well. And open a terminal and change directory to the folder you use for downloads, for example, CD downloads. Okay, that's exactly what we want to do. So we'll just go Oop. CD downloads. And we will verify this. So in our downloads folder is uh, it's still downloading actually, so we will um, wait for this thing to download because it's got a dot part file in there But that's the uh, signature file or the the checksums. So we will wait for that uh, We'll also wait for this thing to down us uh, to, to download as well Okay, so that has now completed and when we list this we should just have Bitcoin um, and the uh, ASC file, so that's great The next thing that we need to do is just copy this and paste that through and it says OK, um, and it says here in the output produced by the command above, you can safely ignore any warnings and failures, uh, but you must ensure the output lists OK after the name of the release file you downloaded, for example, that. So we can see that just through there. Fantastic. Great. Now we can obtain a copy of the release signing key by running the following command. So let's do that. Copy and paste. OK. And the, the output of the command above should say uh, that one key was imported, updated, and new signatures or um, has new signatures or remain unchanged, which is what we can see here. Verify that the checksums file is PGP signed by the release signing key. So we'll do copy this and paste that in like so. And it says here, check that the output from the above command uh, Check the output from the above command for the following text. A line that starts with uh, GPG good signature, a uh, complete line saying primary key fingerprint of that. So this looks good. Um, so it says here uh, good signature. And we can also see that uh, fingerprint is here and it matches up with what's presented here. So that we have now verified uh, this uh, download and it looks good. So we can now uh, move on to installing this um, piece of software. Now, the way that you want to do it is just literally uh, copy and paste this command from Bitcoin.org. Uh, Bitcoin um, so we'll just, in our downloads, just make sure that you are in your downloads folder um, and we will copy that and paste that through. Now, when we list that, we now have a folder called Bitcoin 20.1, uh, 20 so that's good. And the next thing that we need to do is run uh, this command as sudo to install what is in this 
folder. So we're going to copy this and we are going to paste this in like so. Uh, because it's sudo, we need to put in our password and that's it. We now have Bitcoin installed. Now to run this thing, um, we're gonna, uh, th there's multiple methods. Um, you can type in, uh, you can do it graphically um, by typing in this. Um, you can do it via command line as well. I'm gonna go through the command line side of things because I think um, it's, it, for, for me, it's easier. Um, and I'll show you what needs to, um, uh, you know, wh what you can see. Now this here, is the command to run it in command line and in, away in the background. Now, what this will do is um, you can download it. You can you can do it just uh, with this command only. So just Bitcoin D, and it will fire up, and it will have all the logs in this um, in this command uh, in this in this terminal. Now, if you want to run it uh, and close the terminal out, then you would type in Bitcoin dash daemon, and that will clear up your terminal. Now, uh, if we look in our um, in our home directory here, when I click or when I um, put in Bitcoin D, it's going to open up a .bitcoin file, and uh, sorry, it will it will create a .bitcoin directory. This is what's known as our data directory. So watch for that when I do that. Now I'm going to type in Bitcoin D here. And you can see here that a bit .bitcoin uh, hidden file has come up. So we'll open that up and you can see the blocks, chain state, wallets, so on and so forth. So this is what a typical uh, Bitcoin D directory looks like. Um, and this is what's known as the data directory, okay? And you can see here that this is now um, synchronizing the block headers and it is now downloading through the initial blockchain. So what we'll do um, is open up a new terminal here and what we can do is uh, a couple of commands to show you where you are progressed in, in, in this. Um, so you can do Bitcoin CLI get blockchain info and this will give you where you are of how much you have downloaded. So here are the headers that you are downloading which will marry up to these numbers here. And then the blocks itself as well, um, and how much you have downloaded. There are currently over 650,000 blocks to download. Um, so that is as of December 2020. Um, that will continue to increase and that represents around 350 gigabytes. So you are going to be downloading this, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, you are going to be downloading 350 gigabytes of data and it will be in this folder here. Um, it will all get downloaded into this folder. Okay. Um, now, if you want, you, you, like this terminal is hogged up, right? Um, and so what that means is um, it's not ideal in the sense that, um, you know, if you close this out, then Bitcoin um, shuts down. You want this nice and clean. You want your entire uh, workstation to be as clean as possible. So what I recommend is what you can do is control C out of that, and that will close your Bitcoin core. Okay. Now, the other command was, uh, so now if you type in, in this uh, instance here, Bitcoin CLI get um, blockchain info, you'll see that it, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, it produces an error message. That's because the Bitcoin service is not running. But what if you do Bitcoin D slash daemon, which is what was initially told to us. Um, we can see how it says Bitcoin Core is starting and now that is in the background, okay? And so you can then close this terminal and close this terminal and close everything out and you'll be fine and it has Bitcoin running in the background. And so now when I type in Bitcoin CLI get blockchain info, I, it actually works and uh, you can see the headers it's doing the initial blockchain download which you can see uh, here initial blockchain download equals true okay um, and so that is something that you uh, would wish to utilize every time you want to check uh, how far along the synchronization process you are so um, this is now downloading through once it gets to about 650,000 it will start downloading all the blocks okay so if you keep uh, pressing or, or giving that command, uh, we're at 477 or you know 478,000 there. Um, <clears throat> and so you can, yeah, 
have a look through uh, that. Some other commands for you is get uh, Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Bitcoin CLI. Um, now, uh, get connection count. And that shows how many peers you are connected to. Bitcoin CLI, uh, I think it's get peer info is the uh, who you're connected to um, and your peers and the IP address of them. So, you know, there's one there. Um, and, and you can see all the peers that you are connected through to um, with, you know, on, on the command line. So that is um, handy to see. Now, if you wanted to stop this um, in the background, um, you can go Bitcoin CLI stop and it'll say Bitcoin's uh, core is stopping and uh, the cookie file and everything will kind of disappear um, and it, it has now stopped. So now if you run Bitcoin CLI uh, get peer info, you're not going to get it anymore. So now it comes time to configure Bitcoin um, to allow other services um, and pieces of software to talk to Bitcoin Core. Now, the way that we want to do this is editing the bitcoin.conf file. This is a very important file um, and it sits within the .bitcoin uh, folder or your data directory. So let's uh, get configuring. So the way that we do this is cd into our .bitcoin file. And in here, we need to create a uh, bitcoin.conf file. So let's um, nano bitcoin.conf. Now the configuration file, I'm just going to paste this. I've already got it here. Um, and I'll take you through some of the options that I have put through. Now. The first one is server equals one. This is basically uh, allows other pieces of software um, and uh, other computers potentially to talk to our uh, Bitcoin Core instance and get access to it. Now the bottom ones here is the username and password to access that. So I've just set it here as Bitcoin uh, and Bitcoin, uh, username Bitcoin, password Bitcoin, um, but you, should probably, you, you may want to change that. It is completely up to you. Now, um, that is something that you will need to keep private. Um, so if anyone does get a hold of this, then they have access to connect to your Bitcoin Core instance. There are ways that you can sort of hash this password such that it doesn't actually get stored in this. The other thing that uh, we'll need is for Spectre um, to, uh, to kind of look through um, or, or to connect uh, nicely is block filter index equals one. Now these two uh, uh, command lines, TX index one and block filter index one, adds more gigabytes um, to the to the storage uh, of your of your Bitcoin Core instance. These ones here are just to allow certain IP addresses to connect through to your Bitcoin Core instance. And these here are essentially for other pieces of software like the Samurai Wallet Dojo, as well as the Lightning Network node. They will talk to these uh, addresses here. So that is what we are doing in this particular um, conf file. Now, what I will add a little bit later is the how to do how to um, configure this through Tor. Um, so I'll add that later. But at this point in time, I'm because I don't want to slow the whole process of the initial blockchain download by too much. I'm just going to uh, use this configuration. I will put Tor in a little bit later. Um, and the reason is, is because I, yeah, I don't want to slow down the initial blockchain download. I will change this though, um, a little bit and configure it such that it is over Tor. Uh, and that will happen a little bit later. But for now, I am going to do the entire initial blockchain download over my VPN, which I see is connected here. So that's, um, yeah, that's what we'll be doing. Now, I'm happy with this file as it is. And so I'm gonna control X out of that and save modified buffer, yes. And I wanna save that as bitcoin.conf. Okay, excellent. So now I have a bitcoin.conf file here. It kind of agrees back to what I wrote in the command line and there it is there. Okay, now what we wanna do is start Bitcoin D. And so that will read this bitcoin.conf file and it will then start up and start downloading um, all the blocks again. So that's exactly what it's, what's happening. But I have hogged up this, uh, this terminal. If I go new window here, um, you'll be able to see bitcoin cli uh, get blockchain info. 
And you can see here that I am on uh, 270, no, 27,625 uh, out of the 659 that I need. And you'll also see that the initial blockchain download is true which means that this is on its uh, way uh, to downloading all the blocks that are required. So this is uh, you know, plowing away through the 350 gigabytes or so uh, that is required to download and it's just happening. Now, what I wanna do is put this in the background potentially. Um, so I'll just control C out of that. That'll shut down Bitcoin Core. Um, and what we can do is type in Bitcoin uh, D daemon and that will start it back up in the background and you can see that that is now, uh, well, you just gotta wait a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds and it should work. There it is there, okay? So it's got now 36,000, um, sorry, thir yeah, 36,946. So that is, yeah, running away um, nicely in the background. Now to stop uh, this, we can do Bitcoin CLI stop and it will stop um, the the instance okay so now that we've set up our conf file we also now need to set this up such that it automatically starts on boot how do we do that well we use a service file and these service files are actually in uh, they're all contained in generally speaking uh, C, uh, CD slash etc system d system they're all in here okay now uh, we need to get a service file um, that we can use to start this on startup so if we go to the github repository of bitcoin uh, github.com slash bitcoin slash bitcoin and we go to file and we search dot service it is this one here bitcoin d dot service and we go to the raw file itself and we copy this link. Now what we need to do is sudo, because we are in a part of the Linux file system that is not our home directory, uh, we need sudo or ad administrator privileges, so sudo, and we wget that link uh, that we just paste, uh, copied. Now to paste in a terminal, it's control shift V, control V won't work, it's control shift V, um, and so sudo wget uh, that particular file and we need to be in this uh, directory here so let's save that and it'll ask us for our password and that when we list that out now uh, we should be able to see bitcoin d dot service now we need to edit this to match our specific instances okay so let's get cracking on that so nano uh, sorry sudo nano uh, bitcoin d dot service now, this file here is quite extensive, it's, yeah, um, but anything that has a hash in front of it generally is just a comment, and that means that it, this file won't actually read it, 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 yeah, it's just commented out, it's just for your own information only. These are the, this is the section where we actually need to edit things. So, let's take a look at what's going on here. Now, execute start this particular command here. Well, that's not exactly where we installed it to. Now, if you recall, if I open up a new window here and I just type in where is Bitcoin D, this is actually in USR local bin Bitcoin D. This here is displaying USR bin um, Bitcoin D. So what we need to do is add slash local. And so that is where we want it to point to. So, and that is the full uh, directory path to the Bitcoin D binary. Okay. Now um, we can leave this PID file there, the conf file. Now you will recall that this conf file is actually sitting in our dot Bitcoin uh, folder. So what we'll do is CD dot Bitcoin and it is actually sitting at that location there. So where is this? The full location is home slash Catan, uh, which is our home directory, dot Bitcoin slash Bitcoin.conf. And our data directory is actually home slash Catan dot Bitcoin. Okay. So that is, we need to edit those things here. 
Now, the other thing that we should be um, looking to do is editing some of this stuff here um, that makes sure that it actually works. So we will uh, permission start only true. We will comment that out. Change group, we'll comment that out. Now, um, the other thing is, is run as user. So the user that I am using right now is actually my username, not the Bitcoin username. So that's, um, that you can find here. So that's my username. And so that's what I'm putting in there. Uh, everything else looks to be okay. Um, the other thing that I will do is I will just, um, hash some of these, uh, Uh, yeah, I'm just going to hash um, these two out and hopefully now that should be enough to to get this thing started. Okay, so I'm going to control X this, Y this and save that. Okay, so now I have a uh, Bitcoin dot service that is um, uh, that is uh, edited. I just want to make sure that Bitcoin is not um, running. And it's not so that's great now what we want to do is enable this service file okay so let's have a look here sudo um, systemctl enable bitcoin d dot service um, just make sure that you are in uh, this folder here so when you execute that command i, I don't think it matters anyway but uh, just make sure you're there and it will say created sim link fantastic and now what we want to do is sudo systemctl um, start Bitcoin D. And so now that has started in the background. The way that we can check this is if we go back here and run Bitcoin CLI get connection count, and there you go, it actually produces a result. So Bitcoin CLI get blockchain info, and you can see that this is now downloading away 44,000. Um, if we do it again, we've, yeah, it, it, it's increasing. Um, and so that is now downloading away, and we can see that it is uh, happening all in the background. Now you can sort of remove all this, remove all this, clear this out, clear this out, and you are now back into a desktop um, that you can, you know, that as soon as you start up, will have Bitcoin Core running in the background. So that's great. What I'm going to do here is shut this machine down and test it out that it actually works. The other thing that you can also check is the status of this. So the way that you would do that, sudo systemctl status Bitcoin D. And you can see here um, that it is, uh, yeah, um, that it is active and it's running. Now, just say, for example, that you did not uh, edit this correctly. Okay, so let's, let's, um, specifically uh, edit this again. So sudo nano etc systemd system bitcoin dot service. Okay, I am going to uh, hash that. Just say I made a mistake and I didn't I didn't do it properly. Okay, so I've I've changed something in this file control X Y enter. Now, when I've changed a service file, I need to reload it. So the way that I do this is sudo systemctl um, daemon or daemon reload, okay? Then what we can do is sudo systemctl restart Bitcoin D. So that will shut it down and then restart it, okay? Now what we can do is sudo systemctl status Bitcoin D. And you can see here that that, that PID file has now removed itself um, and it's looking pretty good. So it is now running in the background. Now we can see Bitcoin CLI, get connection count. It's got one connection that'll come up a bit later. And we can also do um, maybe get blockchain info and we can see uh, where we are at. So this is now done 84,000 um, blocks out of the uh, 659,000. It starts off very, very quickly, and then it gets really, really slow towards the end. So just be mindful of that. Um, you think that I'm flying through at the moment? No, no, no. This is going to take a very, very long time for um, the initial blockchain download. So just be mindful of it. Be patient with it. Um, the SSD should help. Your system requirements should help. Obviously, if you have a faster internet connection, that's going to help. Uh, but that this is kind of where you're at in, in, at this point. Now let's just check that this does start at startup. So let's uh, shut down this virtual machine. I'm gonna start this back up. 
Uh, so that has connected my VPN. Fantastic. Let's see if I can make this a little bit cleaner. Let's see. Preferences. Launch app on startup. Mm. Start minimized. That's what I want. Okay. So um, let's let's see if my Bitcoin started. So sudo systemctl status Bitcoin D. Looks like it did. Now let's have a look at um, uh, Bitcoin CLI get blockchain info. And it now looks like it has started on boot. So I didn't have to com put any commands in. It just kind of started away in the background. That's great. Um, this is exactly what I wanted. So now all I'm doing is just waiting for this um, initial blockchain download to begin. Um, and hopefully um, by the end of it, uh, I will have a nice Bitcoin uh, core synced up. Okay, so Bitcoin core has now finished uh, synchronizing and a couple of notes that I wanted to make mention of is if you are running this in a virtual machine um, if and if you are snap snapshotting um, it uh, your hard disk turns into uh, dy dynamically allocated and when the uh, blockchain um, gets verified it uses up a lot of hard disk space but it never actually comes down and what ends up happening is that your hard disk becomes full so what I had to do here was uh, essentially wipe the um, the virtual machine, start again, uh, and used a fixed size um, uh, a fixed size a drive uh, rather than a dynamically allocated, which gets converted to when you snapshot. So I didn't do any snapshots, and I probably won't do any more snapshots from here. But um, if you do want to use the snapshot functionality, I would probably get up to here where the blockchain is fully synchronized and then start your snapshots from here. So that's just a, a note for you when it comes to snapshotting if you are using a virtual machine. But now I guess what we can do is check that the, um, that the uh, blockchain has fully synchronized. And so you can do that with Bitcoin CLI, get blockchain info and you can see here that uh, the blocks equals the headers so that's great um, and you'll also note that the uh, initial block download is false now rather than uh, true as it was before now if you want to review the logs of your bitcoin instance you can also use a um, a uh, a method by reading in the command line a particular file so we're going to read um, uh, the debug.log file and that's contained in your dot bitcoin directory uh, which is your data directory and so um, the way that you would do that is type in tail dash f um, dot bitcoin uh, and then debug.log and so you can see here um, what the uh, I guess the the log file is is actually doing um, in the background. So you can see here that we have the height here, and we also have the progress as well. Um, so progress one um, means that it is now fully synchronized to the network, um, but at, at this particular height here. So this is just the log of what's what's happening. Um, uh, yeah. As, as you go through. Um, so you might want to keep an eye on this particular log um, during your initial blockchain download as well. So now we move on to uh, setting this up behind Tor and making sure that the connections are behind Tor. Um, now what we need to do is follow a couple of guides which I will uh, allude you to here. So the first one is the uh, Bitcoin Wiki um, Tor. Uh, setting up a hidden a Tor hidden service, so we'll do that. And the other one is LOP Bitcoin uh, Tor. It is this article here by Jameson LOP. Um, it is this one here. So we'll keep both of these um, open. So the first thing that we want to do is use uh, method one here. Um, now, the way that we're going to do this is we are going to uh, install Tor, which we already have done. So sudo apt install Tor, which we should already have. Um, now, you can check that by sudo systemctl status Tor, and you should be able to see that that has finished 
anonymizing overlay network um, and you'd be able to, to, to see the instance is active here as well. So we'll control C out of that. Now what we wanna do is make sure that we've um, uh, edited our Tor RC file. Now our Tor RC file um, should contain these three lines in here. So what we need to do is sudo nano and the uh, location of that Tor RC file is here. Um, so that's where we will uh, edit. So we'll go etc tor tor rc okay and it comes uh with this um you know, it, it, everything's kind of just uh commented out so down the bottom what we'll do is we will add these three lines in like so okay so paste those in uh, we'll control x that and y this and the other thing that we will do is um, restart tor to enable this or, or to put this into effect so sudo systemctl uh, restart tor um, and then what we need to do is if we just follow through with uh, Jameson's um, guide here so we've added this into our tor rc and we now need to do this um, uh, modify the user that runs Bitcoin D on your machine to be a member of the Tor group. So what we'll do is we will just copy this line item here and it is Debian-Tor is, uh, is the group that it needs to be in. So we'll paste that in, but we'll also edit our username. The username here is this uh, here. That's the one, that's the account that's running Bitcoin. So we'll add that in. Now, uh, we can check this by seeing um, ID and that username, and you should see that here as uh, part of the group. So that's now confirmed. Um, now, that should hopefully uh, work. Um, however, what we do also need to make this into effect, we should restart this computer. So let's go about doing that, and then hopefully we will see that in our log file somewhere. So let's uh, let's let's get this going. Um, now, sorry, the other thing that we also need to do is edit the Bitcoin.conf file. So w with these um, particular lines in there. So let's edit that. Nano uh, Bitcoin um, and Bitcoin.conf, and we'll just add those th couple of lines in through here. So just copy this and paste that through. Um, now, if you additionally want Bitcoin Core to only connect to Tor hidden services, um, add this line, not particularly recommended. Um, I'm going to just do that uh, anyway. So um, we can put that through like so as well. Um, so now we can uh, close out of that, save that. And yes, uh, we do want to save that. So now what we can do is give this a, a bit of a reboot and, and see what happens in our log file. Um, so let's uh, shut down and restart this thing. Okay, let's have a look now. Bitcoin CLI, get blockchain info. And this is looking like it's up. Now let's have a look at the uh, log file. So tail F. Um, dot Bitcoin uh, debug dot log and it is looking for it so we will see um, the other thing that you can also look out for is um, sudo uh, is Bitcoin CLI get network info okay and you can see here that the address has been assigned so that's looking promising um you'll also uh, notice that um the uh ipv4 reachable is false and the ipv6 reachable false but the onion is uh reachable true so this is how i am able to check that this has been assigned uh, a, a tor onion address um, and you can see that address that is my uh, onion address for this particular node that is where it's broadcasting from 
So that's great. Now let's have a look, Bitcoin CLI get connection count. Let's see if I've got any, no. So we'll just wait um, a couple of minutes just to um, go, go through the network and see if we can find um, a peer that we can connect through to. So we'll just leave this here and, and, and see how it goes. Now, the other thing that I wanna show you is the actual um, log itself. So in our Bitcoin file, um, we'll go to, we'll open up this debug.log. And we will go to that latest restart that I have, um, that I've just done. And you can see here, uh, this is very, very similar to what was what we need to um, to see. But you can see it now. It says Tor got uh, service ID, uh, advertising service. So really, what you're looking for is this line or, or these lines here to make sure that you are actually connected via Tor. Um, Let's see if we've got any connections. So we've got one now. Um, we can probably see that by going uh, Bitcoin CLI uh, get peer info. And you can see um, who we're connected to. Um, so that could be this address here is who we're connected to at this point in time. Let's see uh, some more connections. No, we'll just wait um, until we get you know, more connections through um, and, and just confirm that this is all going uh, accordingly to plan. Okay, so another connection came through. You'll slowly drip feed into the network. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. So here's uh, onion address number one. Here's another onion address here. So that, that's our two peers. We'll continue to keep finding more as this thing plays out. But at this point in time, we are now behind at Tor. Um, you don't have to have only uh, only net equals onion. Uh, you can connect to other peers using Tor as well. This is a node that is now completely synchronized and running over Tor. Now, just to review uh, what we have done here, um, we've gotten uh, we've downloaded Bitcoin Core, we've verified it, we've installed it, we've configured it with our uh, Bitcoin.conf file. We've done the initial blockchain download. We've set this up to have uh, Tor connections or set it up over to, to run over Tor. And we have also started this thing on boot. So as soon as the um, machine uh, starts up, it will um, start Bitcoin Core in the background as well. Now, th the only thing that's left is to learn how to update, um, as well as maybe it's just some familiarization pieces. Now, in terms of familiarization, there's a lot of commands here that you can use with your Bitcoin Core node. And to get them, um, you just all you need to do is Bitcoin CLI and help, uh, and that will give you a lot of the commands that you can use. Um, now, generally speaking, uh, this is probably not the best way um, to go about doing things, but if you do wanna see um, what these commands do and all that sort of stuff, then you have a full list of the, uh, of the commands here. Um, so that, that, that can be helpful. Um, so th there's a lot there. Um, in terms of uh, my, I guess, favorite command uh, of all time when it comes to uh, Bitcoin, it is um, Bitcoin CLI get TX outset info. Um, so I'm gonna run this thing here, um, get TX outset info. Now this is going to take a little bit of time to calculate, uh, but basically what this shows is the issuance of the number of Bitcoins in circulation as of right now. And I think that, that is a very, very major breakthrough in computing science. Um, and it is a huge achievement of mankind is that we have now got something that is in supply or that we understand or know that we can verifiably prove the supply of. Uh, this has never happened since um, January 3rd, 2009. And I think that that is a massive, massive credit um, to the inventors or inventor of Bitcoin. Um, so we now have something that we can use to trade. Um, and so here you can see uh, that the number of Bitcoins in circulation is that amount there. Uh, as of this 10 minute block. Um, so I think that that is uh, the most amazing command um, that my node is telling me that the amount of coins that are on issue is 18,563,127 coins in circulation in the Bitcoin economy. Breakthrough, absolute breakthrough. Um, 
that has never happened uh, in the history of humanity. We have never been able to verifiably prove the supply of our money. And uh, each individual is able to do that um, on their home computers. Uh, I, I think that that is, a, that is huge. Now, that's just, I guess, some familiarization pieces. There's obviously um, Bitcoin CLI, uh, get connection count which let's have a look here um so now we now we're up to 10 10 connections um there's also uh get peer info which lists out who you're connected to and the tor addresses um that they you know that, that you're connecting to so that's uh another um command there uh get tx outset info my favorite uh, help uh get peer info and obviously um get blockchain info so those are the main commands that you probably um, will want to pl play around with. Everything else will probably just be tucked away in the background. Um, now, I think it's probably worthwhile um, just going through the steps of how to upgrade your Bitcoin Core node. Um, now, we are running this on a, I guess, um, uh, on, on a system file, um, or, or we're running it through system D, which means that we can use two commands to stop our Bitcoin Core instance. So that is Bitcoin CLI stop, or you can use sudo systemctl stop bitcoin d uh, and that will stop the service as well so that is something uh, that you can uh, both of those you can use um, now i'll just show you uh, the log as that happens um, you want to make sure that you shut down your bitcoin uh, core node uh, as as i guess systematically as possible um, rather than just shutting things down uh, but tail f um, Bitcoin and then debug.log. So this is uh, the latest um, version or, or the, the latest log file there. Um, and if we just hit stop uh, and put in our password, you can see that that is now shutting down and it has now successfully shut down. So a new version of Bitcoin Core has just been released. Um, so I'll take you through how to upgrade uh, to the latest version of Bitcoin Core. Now, if you go to bitcoincore.org, um, it hasn't actually been, uh, you know, th there's no link just yet uh, because it is just brand new. But if you just go over to the bin directory there, uh, you'll be able to see Bitcoin Core 0 0.21, which is the latest version that just got released. And we are going to uh, download uh, the Linux version of that. And we're going to save that file to our downloads folder. And we'll also get the checksum uh ASC file as well, and we'll save that into our downloads folder. Uh, we'll navigate over to bitcoincore.org. We'll go to the download section and let's uh, get the instructions for um, verifying. Now we've downloaded the checksum uh, file, we've downloaded the file, so let's go over to the um, to our terminal and change directory to downloads. And if we have a look here, we've got the latest version there. And we've also got the, uh, the, the, uh, the ASC file that's there as well. So that's good. Now uh, we will just um, copy this, paste that through. Okay, so it says okay. Um, and so that's what you want. And we've already done the, um, I guess, the, the, the release signing key. We've already uh, copied that in. Um, but we can do that again if we so wish. Okay. And we will verify that. And it says here, uh, good signature. So we're happy with that. And the, um, uh, the, the line, the fingerprint should be that and it, and it matches through. So that's handy. Now we want to uh, go back to the instructions on bitcoin.org. En slash full node and Linux instructions. So we've verified the signature and we want to tar the 20 point, uh, 0 0.21. So let's do that. So, 
and we want to one and auto complete that. And so now we have a, um, a new folder uh, that has 0.21 in it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install this, but first I'm going to go sudo systemctl stop Bitcoin D um, to stop the service and shut Bitcoin Core down. Okay, and I'm going to then install this. Um, so let's copy this. And paste, but we are going to put it as 21.0, recalling that that is uh, the newest version there, right? So enter. So that's now installed and you can now sudo systemctl start. Bitcoin D. But before I do that, I just want to have a look at some of the logs that are there. So I'm just going to create a new window here and I'm going to tail f uh, .bitcoin debug log. And so let's see what happens when I start this up. Okay, so this is good. Um, this is fantastic, actually, because what's happened here is that we've upgraded to Tor version 3. Um, and so you can see that the uh, the advertising service, which is exactly what I wanted it to do, um, to change to a longer address, which is uh, version 3 instead of version 2. So I'm expecting to see in um, my Bitcoin folder a new onion v3 private key which is fantastic that's exactly what i wanted to see um, and so we have now successfully migrated through to the latest version of bitcoin and you can check that bitcoin cli dash dash version i believe and you can see here that it is a version 0 0.21 Thank you to the developers who have released this uh, new version of Bitcoin. I look forward to using it. That is exactly what you wanna do uh, if you are upgrading to the next version of Bitcoin. Um, I think in terms of Bitcoin Core, I think I've done a, uh, hopefully um, a good overview of what uh, you need to know and the command line itself and you know how to get this thing synced up. So, um, and running over Tor, so that's 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 handy to know. Um, now I'll just close out of everything, so you can sort of close all your terminals. Um, you can you know, and and this will now just run away in the background. So I'm going to close up all this, and we're always going to return to this uh, screen here, uh, where it's completely blank, and you have a nice uh, workstation that you can use for all your Bitcoin related matters. So uh, that is the deep dive into Bitcoin uh, Core. There's obviously more out there, um, but this will get you up and running and hopefully this kind of helps you um, uh, in throughout the rest of the series as we connect uh, you know, things and other pieces of software through to our Bitcoin Core. Uh, rem remember the Bitcoin Core conf file, um, bitcoin.conf, this, this contains your RPC username and password, which we will use throughout the entire series um, and connecting other pieces of software through to our uh, Bitcoin Core instance. So hopefully that um, uh, gives you a good overview. Um, I'll catch you in the next video uh, where we move on to adding more things to this stack. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to support the work that I am doing, head on over to our website at ministryofnodes.com.au and click on the support button. We also have paid video tutorials, so feel free to check out our store for that. On our web store, you can find a booklet that contains the commands to the entire series, so feel free to check that out as well. And finally, we also offer private consulting sessions where we can discuss Bitcoin related matters. Feel free to book in a session on our calendar. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.